Yeah, so let, let me like kind of lay that out a, li a little bit better in terms of the logic. Uh, and I've done this over the years. This is the largest wealth transfer in the history of humanity. It's, it's, it's a once in a species opportunity. Triple entry bookkeeping, provably scarce assets. And so what we're talking about with, and, and what, what you're getting at is all of these other asset classes are like storage tanks, right? And then Bitcoin comes on the scene and it's a new storage tank that's uncorrelated to all the other ones and it's completely empty. And so what's been happening over the last decade is we've been getting price discovery and we've been getting a couple atoms at the bottom of this storage tank. And what's going to happen is, is this storage tank is going to have to fill up and then capital is going to sloth between it and the other storage tanks, like what already happens between all of the storage tanks amongst themselves. Does that make sense? Absolutely. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on cryptocurrency every day. My name's Austin. This, of course, is Trace Mayer who's a big Austrian economics guy, big Bitcoin believer, and Preston Peisch, who you may know from his wildly successful We Study Billionaires podcast. Now, Preston, who comes from traditional finance, he's more of a traditional investor, has recently become more and more interested in Bitcoin. And do not let the grainy quality of this video fool you. It dropped 21 hours ago. This channel brought it to you first. Now, what Trace is saying is right now, we have a handful of asset classes. We have cash, we have equities, we have fixed income, real estate, commodities. And all the money in the world right now is just sloshing back and forth between them. But with global debt rising, with the Fed and other governments just printing money, what we're going to start to see is investors take some of this money, not all at once, even if it's a percent of a percent of a percent, and put it into a hedge a hedge that has a fixed supply and no single entity controls it. At least that's what these two investors are discussing in this two plus hour long great conversation where they take you slide by slide on a macroeconomic point of view why it would be irresponsible for investors not to allocate a percent of their portfolio into a fixed supply decentralized asset. That's what they say. But I have a question. Why? When Bitcoin is 10 years old, when Bitcoins went from pennies to now $8,000 per BTC, when the market cap of Bitcoin is right now $150 billion. Bitcoin was already the best investment of the last decade. Why would more money come in? Have we not missed the boat? Listen to this. Why up until this year, 2019, Bitcoin really hasn't been investable for big money. We really haven't had the infrastructure the custody, the on-ramps. Well, we haven't had that infrastructure until now. And, and so it's in the process of creating all of this market infrastructure like Ledger X, BAC, you know, the derivative markets, the DCOs, the SEFs, the DCMs, uh, that, that are going to enable this sloshing between the asset classes that we haven't had in the previous cycle. And guess what? We're in the information age now. Stuff can happen like that. You know, we could wake up tomorrow and Bitcoin could be a million dollars a coin. That's how fast this could happen. Will it happen that fast? I think that's highly improbable, but it could. I mean, I think, I think this is a very important point that you brought up on Bitcoin being uncorrelated to all the other assets. And I think that there are a variety of reasons for this. It's not been investable because of the regulatory scene. It's been misunderstood. Uh, people don't, don't have the infrastructure to be able to invest in it. The, the law doesn't support it. Well, guess what? We, we got 13 bills passed in Wyoming. And now ERISA fiduciaries can invest in Bitcoin with Wyoming custodians. Yeah. I mean, like all of this type of work has to get done before the large amounts of capital can treat this as an asset class like they treat all the other asset classes, whether it's real estate, bonds, uh, stocks, etc. Really great perspective. If you are interested in Bitcoin's place on the macroeconomic level, I'm going to link this entire two-hour discussion down below in the description. Check it out. 
and like the video, support them, get this information out to as many people as you can. That being said, I have three major headlines that if you are involved in the crypto space, I think it's important that you know, including some tweets that CZ of Binance does not want you to see. These tweets have since been deleted. I have a screenshot that I wanna to bring to you. But first, the major story of today, the CFTC chairman confirms that the Ethereum cryptocurrency is a commodity. Bitcoin maximalists may be, may be crying right now because this is a big green flag for Ethereum, green flag on the regulatory level and maybe on the price action level in the next run. We'll see. Speaking at the Yahoo Finance All Market Summit Thursday, Tarbert, who is the CFTC chairman, Heath Tarbert, said that he believes Ethereum is not a security. In a direct quote, he says, we've been clear on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a commodity. We haven't said anything about Ether until now. It is my view as chairman of the CFTC that Ether is a commodity. Big green flag. And what this means for you, going forward, the CFTC may allow Ethereum futures to trade on US market markets, he suggested. So just like we have Bitcoin futures, Ethereum futures may, may be on the way. We'll see. But to put this in a legal perspective from lawyer Jake Travinsky, the CFTC calling Ethereum a commodity has nothing to do with securities laws at all. Securities are a type of commodity. Financial instruments can be one, both, or neither. But let's not forget not to mention the SEC already said Ethereum isn't a security last summer. At least one guy in the SEC. So we'll see. Uh, either way, this is big. You tell me down below in the comments. But next piece of news, it's official. Alipay, which is big in the East, big in Asian markets, to ban all Bitcoin related transactions. And really, this all started when CZ responded yes to the tweet. Hey, is Binance now accepting fiat on-ramps with Alipay and WeChat Pay? Exciting news. Would love somebody confirm from CZ Binance. And CZ retweeted this to his following, yes. And if this was true, this would be huge because WeChat and Alipay have a ton of daily active users around the world, mainly the East, which would be introduced to Bitcoin if this was true. But I guess CZ was a little confused because underneath Alipay responds and says, no, you cannot. So Alipay is vehemently denying that you ever could. It's because if you're a big corporation in China, close ties with the Chinese government, and the government is making their own cryptocurrency, which is probably what they'll integrate with these two entities. We'll see. But the story here is these tweets that were deleted. And if, if this is too small, I'm gonna link this down below in the description. But this comes from Larry Cermak, who I know of a little. He's a reporter, he's a writer that works for The Block, which is a cryptocurrency news outlet. Larry alleges, and again, he's a writer slash reporter. This is nice and all, but there are multiple executives at quote unquote Asian exchanges, he's alleging Binance, that told him that Alipay and WeChat are both very well aware of P2P over-the-counter trading in China and willingly let it happen. And exchanges, like Binance, have government relationships that tell Alipay and tell WeChat to turn a blind eye when this Bitcoin OTC trading is happening. Larry goes on to say that some large Asian exchanges, won't be specific, but he's alleging Binance, have dedicated unfreezing teams so when Alipay slash WeChat freeze an account because of crypto trading, customers can just open a ticket and the exchange, like Binance, will use their government relationships to contact Alipay and WeChat and they'll unfreeze them. And Larry finishes, before CZ cut him off, Larry finishes that Alipay is just signaling publicly that this doesn't happen, but to date they have virtually done nothing about it. And I'd bet they know exactly which customers are trading OTC. So he's saying that they're signaling publicly that they don't allow it, but secretly they do. And this guy is a reputable reporter with the block Bitcoin news. And this doesn't make it true. But to me, what does make it true is CZ's response. And the reason Larry didn't have to do this, but for some reason he caved for, caved for CZ. CZ responded, some things are better left unsaid. Recommend no more news like this for the sake of the people, our industry. 
and your business. Okay, it's easy as strong arming the news. It seems very weird. I appreciate whoever took the time to screenshot this. The minute I get more information, I'm gonna follow up. So subscribe to the channel. You do not wanna miss our next video. The last piece of news, Coinbase Pro releases an iOS mobile app promising usability and mobility. If you have an iPhone, this information's for you. They introduced this app on October 10th and it provides access to more than 50 trading pairs for users in over 100 countries and generally duplicates the platform's features including real-time candles, depth charts, order books, and types. Coinbase Pro's mobile app users will pay the same fees for orders as those executed on the desktop platform. So if you wanna trade, Coinbase Pro is making it very easy to do that right from your phone. Anyways, that is the video for today. My name's Austin. Like always, I'll see you tomorrow. Man, if people don't have any of this, don't have any Bitcoin, it's, it's just such a huge question. Like, what were you doing? Were you asleep at the wheel? Well, because, we're, because we're talking about the, the, the wealth transfer is going to come from all of those other assets to the holders of Bitcoin. So, you know, these pension funds and these endowments, like their wealth is at extreme risk to getting transferred to the holders of Bitcoin. Like, why didn't you have any?